Hello everyone, it's Andrew from AntRC and this is my latest update to my Cross RC MC8 build. Now, before I get into all of the good stuff, I just wanted to discuss a little further the lighting, which is where I left off pretty much with the last update. And in that update, I had spent many hours just before filming uh, trying to get the Cross RC supplied lighting um, rig to work to no great avail and I was a little bit frustrated uh, and that kind of came over in the filming so I'm going to apologize for that uh, I did call the lighting rig rubbish which was perhaps a little bit uh, not cool um, I, and certainly experience uh, about other people's experiences that I've come across since then leads me to believe the likelihood is I've done something wrong uh, rather than the kit part being wrong. So, born of frustration, I'm not going to redo that video and uh, you know, I don't think it's that big a deal, but I did want to set the record straight. Now, what will be featuring in the build? Continuing on the lightning front, um, as if to prove my ham-fistedness, which is also another reason for requiring um, an update on the video, the four spotlights that I showed you last time, I managed to blow them as well. Don't really know how, um, don't really know how because these are plug and play straight into a straight into the receiver. I don't know how I've managed to blow them but apparently I have. Um, but you know the great thing about buying things from a shop, like a proper real person shop like Simon at Green Models is that you can send stuff back. Um, admittedly, you know, you pay the postage, it's only fair. And he tests it all. He said he tests them as he, as, before they come out, so that's even better. You know, you, you know when you buy them, you know you've got something that is going to work. So it was pretty clear I'd screwed it somewhere, I'd, I'd fused it somehow. Um, and he tested it and said, yeah, you, you cut the rubber off the back here, and uh, it was all sort of charred and you know gone pop basically, which is a shame. So what I'm going to do with these, um, dud as they are is uh, still I'm still going to put them on the truck in the down underneath the man badge and um, they just won't work they just won't have any power to them um, and I'm gonna I have already ordered some um, just random LEDs with Hella covers so I'm gonna replace take off the, the standard ones here and uh, put some Hella covers on so they at least look the part even if they don't work um, to replace those on the lightning um, duty, I've copied Terry and bought the same pair of lights that Terry got, which are the Baja Spotlights. Um, these little fellas, RC four wheel drive. Can't find you. There you go. Squadron Pro LED lights. Now they're actually much smaller than I, I, I thought they were when Terry showed me pictures of them. Um, so they are they are really quite small compared them to sort of standard LED size. Where the, the camera going to pick that up? There you, there you go. So they are quite small, much smaller than I thought, which is good. They are actually small enough to go inside, I believe, inside the headlight covers, which I've got here, uh, freshly painted, which I'll come to. So they they theoretically would fit quite comfortably as replacement headlights. Uh, should I so want them? I'm just not sure how waterproof these are uh, And I've no intention of wasting 22 pounds finding out so they're gonna sit up on the top of the roof um, As I think that's uh, gonna keep them out of the way of most most of the crud now So that's it for lighting Just a small change gonna have some spotlights on the roof um, yeah, and, and the dud ones on the on the front now what else have I been doing? I've also taken delivery of my action camera, which is the cheapy from eBay, uh, Firefly 1080 high definition apparently. Um, we action camera now. The reason I got this is because it's tiny. You pop it out of its mount. So that's how big it is. It is quite small. I haven't got giant sized hands. Um, it is really quite small and cute. 
um, comes in a custom mount which you can obviously use or not use and what I've done is I've made up out of some packing foam a little seat for it like so uh, and that will sit in the front seat of the cab so I'll wedge it in that's what these two diagonal cuts are for to uh, wedge it in between the seat and the dash bulkhead so it should give approximately a good view out of the windscreen with a little bit of the cab detail as well it's quite a wide view um, I've tested it, it does work um, I, haven't, I haven't blown this one up as well uh, it does work and uh, unfortunately because as I say it's dark here for well, I don't know, the next four months it feels uh, getting some daylight test shot of, footage of it is, uh, hasn't happened yet so that's, that's also quite exciting um, I've built the battery box so this sits on the flat bed just behind the cab um, with the preset hole in it uh, for the for the battery wires and obviously at that point you need to have a battery to fit um, my usual 5000 mAh uh, 3S light bulb fits but it crushes the wire a little bit too much to get it down the hole so uh, rather than uh, risk upsetting the cabling in the battery um, gone on the hunt for a smaller battery it's a little bit less a uh, little bit lower rated battery but it's still a 3S um, and this one is a 30 to 60 C discharge so it shouldn't uh, it should have a little bit of poke still um, just might not run for as long but it's a lot thinner than my usual and fits the battery tray a peach so there you go close up again if you there you go if you need to find one um, there it is so it fits in nice and the battery fit through the hole probably end up sitting upside down like so so the cable's not getting too too mangled in there um, and that should quite, I'll just run through the flatbed where there's also a hole uh, and uh, meet up with the rest of the cables so that's sorted I've been doing a little bit of work on the on the flatbed so the flatbed's quite intricate um, you get a whole bunch of these uh, sort of resin molded um, cleats, tie hooks, uh, which are all really nicely molded. Um, they do have a, um, a a molding seam down the middle of each cleat, which I've sanded off each one. So it's taking a little bit of time to do, but I, I don't like molding joints on uh, on plastic. It annoys me. Um, this is, uh, I think, this is the uh, tailgate actually that I'm working on here. It's got metal hoop, metal. Um, hoop across the top which is cool uh, you you glue this bit on this panel here glues on and traps the metal hoops inside um, so there's a little bit of play on there they're not they're not joined they're not glued in um, so I may yeah if this show signs are coming out well they've got they've got little um, turnouts on them so they shouldn't pull out it's just be a little bit loose it's not a big deal um, yeah so that's pretty nice got the rest of the flatbeds to do there's a whole bunch of panels like that to do um, obviously the main thing I've been doing is painting the cab so let's finish off with a look at that oh I just wanted to show you my door pockets I don't know whether I've shown you these or not um, this is the inside panel of the door which as you can tell obviously isn't on the truck yet um, and I've made uh, out of some cargo netting some um, door pockets for my scale trucking magazine is the camera gonna pick that up and scale map that I've done um, yeah it's just gonna sit there looks nice a little bit of detail and um, when the doors open so what have I been doing I have painted oh, didn't sound so good did it uh, I've painted the cab there it is and it is um, it sits on my little turntable thing so how have I done this? First of all, well, I've obviously done the usual prep for the plastic, washed it, um, toothpasted it, just to basically key the surface a little bit, and then I've used some primer, um, which I will show you if you're interested. One second. Right. So here's the primer. So Halfords in the UK is a, a motoring um, motoring store, sell all sorts of car stuff, and they do 
very good spray cans and they're quite big as well this is a 300ml 500ml um, spray can and it's eight pounds so it's quite a good value compared to a Tamiya spray can and so on um, this is the primer this went on first and then I have done the top coat in enamel spray paint now Terry's got a different way with his he's gone with um, acrylic paint which is you know okay that's cool it's his choice I'm a bit old school as I've probably said about a hundred times uh, and I'm used to using enamel paints and uh, not the uh, young upstart uh, acrylic so I've gone with enamel I, I obviously want a fairly tough finish on this it's going to get dragged through bushes and things so um, I'm, I'm really all about getting a resilient paint finish I'm not sure about acrylic maybe it does maybe it doesn't but I'm pretty sure enamel does give a very uh, tough finish so I went with enamel this is an industry gray this this the Halfords they do two grays uh, one is very light uh, and almost like a like a beigey color I, I, I got it originally initially and uh, wasn't that keen when I got it in the daylight it looked a bit funny so I, I took it back and got this one instead which is industry grey but importantly you can see there it is RAL7005 that's the colour chip that it is uh, matched to um, and I'll be honest with you this is a 300ml tin it probably feels I don't know it feels half third full maybe so I've done the whole cab I've done one one and a half coats I've done one full coat and then I've touched up a few bits uh, and I've done the various uh, odds and ends that go along with the carb. These are the blocks that sit under there uh, inside to be to form like a wheel arch. Uh, you've seen the headlight guards, which are obviously going to go underneath the carb at the front. They're metal. Um, and I've done the, uh, the roof hatch and the spare tire mount. So it's done all of that there's about half or a third of a can left I've got another can so it should be enough to do the load bed as well um, if you're careful what I have used after the grey is some satin lacquer and you can see my spray can handle I've never used one of these before uh, until this build and for me it worked a treat I really like it um, Terry bought one because I was uh, waxing lyrical and he's not so keen so I guess everyone, as usual, takes their pays their money and takes their choices. But um, for me, I like this. It gives a, a little bit more control uh, over the nozzle pressing than uh, especially these Halfords ones because they're, they're really for cars. I guess they're quite full on and uh, quite a powerful spray. So I uh, I like the subtlety this brings, and it's also a bit more comfortable to use rather than holding the can. And I'll be frank with you, it wouldn't be once or twice it's quite a few times that the nozzles turn around when I've put the can down I've picked it up and pressed it and it's sprayed me in the face so um, it also avoids uh, uh, covering my glasses in paint which is yes a little bit awkward so that's what's uh, what's happened on here now a few things I've done probably should mention um, just because I, I kind of made them up as I went along um, as I've covered uh, I've masked the, the hole at the top here from the inside I have glued in with um, hot glue the windows front and sides and placed the doors in and taped them from the inside the floor which lifts out from here that's the that's the floor section can still be cut out. I'm going to pull out very shortly and uh, deal with the windows properly but I've tucked the windows in and tucked the doors in to mask the inside while I spray the outside. Um, you can maybe just make out the hot glue. Um, let me just turn this around a bit into the light so you can see it better. There you go. So you can see the lumps of hot glue here. Yeah, that is that window frame is going to get painted black afterwards. Um, it's, a, it's a rubber seal. So I'll be hand painting that in afterwards. So I'm not bothered about having um, the glue on there and, and you know, like a it's going to be effectively uh, a slight dodgy looking finish when it comes off but I can peel the hot glue off sand it down a little bit and then just paint them in black uh, once I've put the windows in properly so the windows have still got their film on they've still got their protective film on uh, so I'll just basically pop them out which I've already done a couple of times by accident 
So I'll just pop them out properly, um, take the film off, and hopefully the interior isn't covered in grey overspray. That's my hope. The floor joint down here, as you can maybe just tell, there is a bit of a gap. I did put some masking tape on the bulkhead of the dashboard before I closed the thing up um, to stop it falling out by accident and to also stop any spray going in uh, and, and creeping into the uh, under, under the floor and so on. Um, the um, yeah, the windows, the doors are taped from the inside, so they uh, that's what's holding these shut. The windows are likewise hot glued in, but this time from the out from the inside. Um, as you can see, the, the inner door hasn't been fitted yet, so that will that cements the window in in due course. So yeah, so there you go. That's all. That's all for now. And um, I would like to think that my next update will be the cab far more completed than it is now. Okay, more and on. Thanks for watching.